Hey there, do you get distracted while you're working? Because me too. But I have found a way that is gonna make me think twice, at least, once I'm gonna get distracted while I'm working. And this is time tracking. And you may know that I use Notion for everything, so I was kind of bummed that it was a little bit difficult or impossible to have a time tracking tool integrated within Notion. But I have found the way. By the way, if you don't know what is Notion, this is a tool that over 20 million people are already using for organizing everything in their lives. It's an all-in-one tool that you can use for project management, time tracking now, as a CRM, sales management, like everything. So if you're a business owner, freelancer, or working in a team, this video interests you. So let's get into it on how to time track in Notion. So maybe now you may be asking, why do this in Notion if there's other time tracking tools out there? Yes, I have tried and I have probably tried them all. But why did I want to do this in Notion? Because I already have all my tasks in Notion. So whenever I want to use Toggle or whatever other tra uh, time tracking tool, I needed to duplicate my tasks, insert them in Toggle and then tracking the time there. It was a huge time waster. So I ended up not doing it because I'm lazy. Mm, that's it. And second, why on earth would we want to track our time? Our lives are already too complicated, so why make it more? Okay, there are some reasons, and some of them even scientific. Well, if we are building our projects, depending on the time that we spend on them, there you have it, one reason. If you are managing a team, probably you'd like to know how long your team took to get a certain task done. And if they're taking too long, this may mean that they have an issue and they may help you. If when you're scheduling your tasks, you are estimating how long they're gonna take, then you can compare to the real data so you can get better at estimating, then better at scheduling, and thus better at not over scheduling your weeks. And the last one, and probably the most important, is that time tracking reduces distractions. When people know that their time is being tracked and measured, they may be more likely to stay on the task and avoid distractions. Because if they're browsing Twitter, that time is counting for the task that they should be doing. Cool, so if you are convinced, let's see how we do this in Notion. So in Notion, we're gonna only need two databases. One, if you are using Notion, probably you already have, which is a simple task database, so let me build it. And then the other one that is gonna serve us to calculate actually the time that we have spent on the task. You will see why I need two databases for this. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is to relate these two databases because yes, the time tracking is gonna be calculated over here and then we are gonna move all that data over to the task because we may have to have several uh, time blocks for one task. So let's first relate the two databases. Okay, now we are gonna need two date properties over here in the time block. One for when the log starts and when the log ends. Now we are gonna need another property, which is which log is active for which task. This is going to help us later when we build the task part to be able to find which is the active log so we can write the end date. But more on that later, don't worry. So, so far we just need a checkbox and we call it active log. Now, if you are working on a team, you may also want to have a person property so we can distinguish who is working on which uh, task. Okay, and so far that is it. Then we will make it a little bit uh, cooler, but yeah, so far we, we have almost everything. So now the idea is that in every task, I'm gonna have a, a time log template. And here I want to see all the different time logs. We're going to have one row per time that we have logged with the start and the end date. And then two buttons that are going to help me log my time. So let's do it. This is a linked database to my time log database. And we are going to filter it. So we just show this task. So we I'm filtering by the name of the template. So whenever the template runs, this is going to be the name of the task in which we are in. So here I'm just going to need the start and end, the active log and the person. That's cool. And we can sort it by start, sort descending. Okay. Now let's build the two buttons. Button number one, this is going to be start login. 
And what this button is going to do is to add a page to our time log. We can call this time log. This doesn't really matter, but we need something. Then we're going to link this to the current task. So this means this page. And then the start is going to be now. Make sure that it's now because this includes the time because today doesn't include the time. So yeah, we need the one that, that does. Then we are going to set this log as active because we are starting it. So this is going to be active. And the person who is working on it, it's person who clicked the button. So you can see that this is scalable to whoever is going to work on, on the task. And that is it. Now we need the other button for the opposite. Stop logging. Now what we want to do is to edit a page because we want to stop or to write the end date on the log that we have created from the first button. So now we need to find that log and how we are going to do it. So the person contains me. So this me means whoever is the owner of the account that is being used to click the, the button. So again, this is scalable for, for everyone and that the active log is checked. Remember that we checked the active log over here. So like this, among all the logs that I own in this case, I'm just going to work on the one that is active, which is only one. I can only be working on one thing at a time. And if you try to multitask and you think that you are being efficient, you are living in a lie. And then what I want to do is simply write, which is the end date with the now and to don't make it as an active log anymore. Okay. Now we can place this into columns. We can even make it more beautiful. Okay, cool. So let's see how this works. It's not finished, but let's see what we have so far. Let's go back and let's create a task. Let's delete all this shit and let's create a new task. We can, if we're always going to uh, log the time, we can make this template the default for all views like this, whenever I create a new task, this is going to appear within. Okay, time block templates, and we have all of this. So let's say I'm gonna start uh, working on this. I'm gonna just click here, and that's it. The time log has been created with the start at right now. Okay, I am the person and the log is active. So now let's say that I have finished uh, working on this. So I'm gonna click here on stop login, and that's it, it's gonna write the date and is going to set this out as non-active and right, for the sake of this demonstration let's say that i've been working for one hour on the on the task so we can do then some some calculations because so far we don't really know how long i've been working on the task but we have the data that is going to allow us to calculate that how using formulas so we need a formula over here on the time log that is going to calculate the number of minutes that we have been working on the task and the formula is this one, date between the end property minus the start property in minutes. This is minus because this should be PM. This is a real one hour. Yes, now it's 60. And now if our tasks are a little bit longer, uh, we may want to calculate how many hours this is. So we can write another formula, time elapsed in hours, and this is simply gonna be time elapsed divided by 60. And that is it. But now let's say that we have a couple of logs here. Okay. As, a, as the example. Okay. I finished logging. Let's say that I started at, I don't know, at 10, at 10. And this I finished at 11. Okay. Just for the sake of this demonstration. So we have two time logs. So how can I bring the sum of this time elapsed over here using a rollup? This property, what it does is uh, it lets me select which relation I want to use and which data I want to bring from that relation. In our case, is the time elapsed in minutes and then we can perform some calculations. So in this case, instead of just 60 and 41, I want to sum it. So this 101 minutes. If we don't want the minutes, if we want the hours, that is it. Same setup. Okay, so 1.68 hours. This can be called hours spent. And by the way, now you know that we can even change this icon and that is it. But now what if we are using a view of this database in some dashboard or something like this, and we also want to see 
easily who is working on this uh, very task. We can also do that because we have all the information over here. So what I will do is I will create another rollup because we have the person property here, right? So who's working on it and the property is that the relation is the time block and the person is that one. Show unique values. But I think this is not right because what if there is multiple logs from multiple people? So they're all going to be here. So we need to do something extra, which is to just bring the name of the person who is working on the task. How do we do this? <laughs> With another formula. So let's create a formula who's working and this is the formula that we're going to be using. So if the property active log is true, which means that is checked, then we're going to return the name of the person. And if it's not checked, so it's well, what comes after the comma, then nothing. We need to format it this way because if not, it is not going to work. And that is it. So then this rollup is not right because we need to use this new who's working that we just created. So then how is this going to work? I'm going to start logging this and there you have it because in the log, now that this is active, my name's here and with the rollup, we are bringing it here. So here we have totally the status of the task. If there is a name here, it means that someone is working on the task. So now I stop logging and that's it. One more minute that that's counted towards the time spent. So there you have it. It was a super easy setup. And what I like about this is that you can implement this right now in your own task database, no matter how your database looks like, because you will just have to create this time log database with all the properties that I've just created. And that is it. And you will have it. So let me know in the comments below if you find this useful and if you are going to, to use it moving, moving on. So if you like videos about how we can use Notion to run our businesses, I'm going to leave a video over here in which I show a full blown out super system that already more than 250 companies are using to run their business. So that is it for today, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.